Hello everyone and thank you for joining me in this new episode of Star Trek the Original Series. Okay, so this is a very special episode for me today. I have a few announcements to make. Well, not, not actually announcements. The first thing is, I, ever since I started about three years ago, I have tried to improve the quality of my videos. I hope that if you have been following my, my channel since the beginning, or if you have actually dived into my old videos, I hope you can see some difference. And so what I wanted to show you guys is that I got a new addition to the channel, which is this beauty over here, as you can see. Um, probably shouldn't have done that. I chose it because it will have like beautiful colors and now I can see that it doesn't appear in my shot unless I put it here somewhere. I don't know, but it's going to get closer to the speaker, so no. Uh, but this is the new addition. I hope the sound is better. Uh, the next thing that I wanted to share with you is that today's episode is Season 2, Episode 15, The Trouble with Tribbles. And so why is this episode so important? Because this is the only episode I remember from Star Trek. And this is something I told you the very first video I made for this channel that I love the Tribbles and that they were so cute and that I wanted to have one and that uh, they were like this little beings that reproduce a lot. This is all I remember. That's it. I have no idea who brought it in, how it got in. I can't remember. I, all, I, all I remember is that they are these little fur balls, that they are super cute, but then they are everywhere in the ship. This episode uh, also is pretty much half of the series, which means it will probably take me six years to watch the entire series. Let's hope not. But this is pretty much half all the series. And so this, for me, is a very important and special episode. And since this is season two, episode 15, and it's all about the triples, the best thing I could wear for today's very special episode was this very nice furry hat you can see here and and I hope you like furry things because this one's staying the entire video for today's episode I got this mocha frappe that I get from a very nice couple that lives near my house today I have Robin here with me and Yaluk is visiting the mothership today and he's staying in his basket how close will we come to the nearest Klingon outpost if we continue on our present course? Close enough to smell them. That is illogical, Ensign. Odors cannot travel through the vacuum of space. I was making one side or the other must prove it can develop the planet most efficiently. And unfortunately, though the Klingons are brutal and aggressive, they are most Very efficient. Yeah, I kind of thought that. Yeah, but the great have a problem like that. Hey, Captain. My goodness, this guy is all about Russia. It's called one emergency. That's a disaster call. This is a red alert. Man your battle So what happened? More than an emergency, it signals near or total disaster. Oh my. Yeah. Oh no. Just the station. It's not destroyed. You issued a priority one distress call. State the nature of your emergency. Yeah. Uh, well, perhaps you better beam over. I'll try to explain. You'll try to explain. Better be prepared to do more than that. Kirk out. Spock on your <laughs> Well, it is a very mysterious start. That was my order, Captain. Who's that? Mr. Barris is the Federation Undersecretary in charge of agricultural affairs in this quadrant. Okay. This is another Smithers. At least this guy already got a line. He looks obnoxious. The first guy also looks obnoxious. And recalling the history I've had with Star Trek, there's always this obnoxious guy that wants to do whatever his authority allows them and they always want to just snap their fingers and make everyone do whatever they want. So I hope this guy is not like that because I effing hate those people. Let's continue. 
that gives him the authority. Oh, he does have authority. The storage compartments containing the quadro What? What? quadro Four lobed hybrid of wheat and rye. A perennial also, if I'm not mistaken. Perennial? 20th century Canada. I must be smart. Major point. He's already proven he's a machine. Mr. Barris thinks that Klingon agents may try to sabotage it. You issued a priority one distress call for a couple of tons of wheat. Quadro Triticale. Okay. If this is the only thing that will grow in a planet, then... Okay, probably not priority one. Probably priority two. But if you want to go under the radar and so that the Klingons cannot know about your shipment then you want to go super under the radar and probably that's why they use the priority of the channel maybe i'm not sure so captain couldn't you at least post a couple of guards we do have a large number of ships passing through seem a logical precaution captain the sherman's planet affair is of extreme importance to confederation i have never questioned the orders or the intelligence of any representative of the federation until now. <laughs> I love the comeback. Summoning a starship on a priority. Oh my god, the waitress has little dragonfly wings, and I love dragonflies. Quattro Triticale. I've read about this, but uh, I've never seen any before. Does everybody know about this wheat but me? Well, not everyone, Captain. It's a Russian invention. Oh my goodness. Oh. Surely you want some. He has this mud vibe. Harry mud. Oh, what is it? Is it alive? May I hold it? She got it? Oh, it's adorable. What is it? Oh my goodness. Except, of course, your lovely self. <laughs> Are you selling? That's what we're trying to decide right now. These two are playing along, right? Bye. Really? Sir, transporting harmful animal. Imagine if those little things actually bite. <laughs> oh my god. Well, if you're not gonna take him, I'm gonna take him. I think he's cute. They are together, yeah. Faith. In fact, I'll tell you this one. Hey. Is he from my guy? That'll be ten credits. Then no! No! The tribbles are gonna eat the... Tri the... the, the it is the problem. Oh my god. Captain, it is not necessary to remind you of the importance to the Federation of Sherman's planet. The key to our winning of this planet is the grain. You will render any aid and assistance which Undersecretary Barris may require. More than Safety two guards. Well, that's just lovely. Yep. But not totally unexpected. Captain, sensors are picking up a Klingon battle cruiser. Rapidly closing on the station. Got a red alert. Notify Mr. Lorry. We'll be right up. That's a problem. What is the position of the Klingon ship? 100 kilometers of K7. It's just sitting there. Captain, I have Mr. Lorry. Because at this moment, the captain of the Klingon ship is sitting right here in my office. Trying to bargain? Security, cancel red alert. Okay. I had no idea that I was going to see Klingons for the third time in the Tribbles episode. Like, I hardly remember anything. I kind of sensed that the wheat thing and the Tribbles were going to be connected because they were going to be so many. Like I said, I do remember that they become a kind of a plague. And when I saw it eating the little sample from Chekhov, it was like, yeah, they're going to go straight for this wheat reserves. But I had no idea that I was going to see the Klingons for the third time. So I'm kind of excited because every time that there are Klingons, you know, things kind of spice up. And just as an additional fact, this is the first episode with Klingons included that has received at least one vote. Ah, my dear Captain Kirk. My dear Captain Kolar. Let me assure you that my intentions are people. We Klingons are not as luxury minded as you were this. This Klingon. Koloth. He looks awfully familiar. 
the way that he speaks is very different from Commander Kor and from the other one that doesn't even have a name uh, from Friday's Child. I'm gonna give it more time. And now I am looking at the guy with the green eyes. Did he ever portray Jesus? Because he will be a perfect Jesus, you know, for 60s style. He looks tough, you know. He looks pretty tough. Okay, so let's continue. What we choose as recreation is our own business. I might also add that under the terms of the Organian Peace Treaty, you cannot refuse us. Is this William Campbell? Oh my god. Is this Trelane? I, 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 I'm gonna continue watching, but is, is this him? There's been no formal declaration of hostilities between our two respective governments. This is William Campbell. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm not even paying attention to what they're saying. I am so sorry. I know that you hate it when that happens. I am paying attention to what they say, but at this point, like, my head is so fixated. Cast. William Shatner, Leonard Nimoy, the first Kelly, William Scheller, William Campbell. Okay, it is him. Those eyes, that voice, that way of acting. But again, I was like, it cannot actually be him, but it was him. Okay, so at least I got it correct this time. I also got correct Sarek. Okay, William Campbell, thank you everyone for not spoiling this for me. You have no idea how much I appreciate that you have not spoiled this one for me. Thank you. Another technical journal, Scotty? Aye. Don't you ever relax? I am relaxed. That's my dad. Aww. Oh my god, oh, there have been so many. Well, I'd say in that case you got a bargain. Nine. Trilling seems to have a tranquilizing effect on the human nervous system. Fortunately, of course, I am immune to it. Really? Are you? <laughs> no, he isn't. Well, all right, Doctor, but if you're going to dissect it, I don't want to know about it. I won't harm a hair on its head, wherever that is. <laughs> Maris, I have guards around the grave. I have guards around the Klingons. As for what you want, it has been noted and logged, Kirk. Sick pay with a headache. Oh my goodness. I mean, Kirk is annoyed. And when he's annoyed, he can be a pain in the arse. And now, with the Klingon's presence there, and having a very cocky captain, this time Kalev here, we have a different type of Klingon. Because the first one was... Core and he looked fierce, like an animal, but like a very fierce animal, the kind of animal you don't, you don't want to mess around with. The second Klingon, he looked like the kind of person you don't want to mess around with because he could betray you, because he could stab you in the back. And here, Kalath, no, this guy is completely different from the image that I have built with this two first Klingon appearance. And I'm not dissing um, the other two actors. I can't remember their names right now. This, this look in his eyes, and this is the kind of person that I wouldn't want to mess around with, but because he looks incredibly intelligent. I'm excited now that William Campbell is in this episode, and I am very excited to see how Kirk is going to react because his attitude is not what he likes. Everyone is kind of having an attitude towards him, like Barris and now Colleth. And with the Tribbles, this is really going to take him all the way to here because, you know, this is the name of the episode. Not the Klingons, not the, the wheat, and not the two white colors that were on his back. No, this is about the Tribbles, so let's see how it happens. What do you got for a headache? Let me guess. It's going on. Barris. Oh. How many of the Almost 50% of the creature's metabolism is geared for reproduction. They live to you know reproduce. You if you feed a triple too much. A gremlin. A fat triple. No. A lot of triple. A whole bunch of hungry little triple. Did you open up a maternity ward? Or don't feed them. Going on Shirley, this guy? I know, sir. I want you to go on Shirley. Make sure that everybody stays out of trouble. Kirk, do you even remember what happened to Scotty last time he was on a shore leave? Really? 
Could you just respect his wishes for once? Shari, enjoy yourself. Ah, friend Klingon! Can I interest you in Take it away! Yes. Oh! So it detects Klingons. Great! Useful! Oh man! <laughs> that pup's gonna go bankrupt. They don't like Klingons at all. I never liked Earthers. Somebody's looking for a fight. Easy, lad. You wanna be more forgiving? <clears throat> oh, that's Kirk, a regular bloodworm. Soft shape, but Kirk isn't. So Kirk may be a swaggering, overbearing, tin-plated dictator with delusions of God. Easy, lad. Everybody's entitled to an opinion. I love Scotty, but sometimes he can go on the other side. That Kirk <clears throat> is a Denebian <clears throat> slime devil. Well, that's my opinion. But you heard what he called the captain. So what? He's trying to it's get you into a fight. For. Exactly. <laughs> we like the Enterprise. We, we really do. <laughs> oh, no, he's talking about Scotty's girl. Buckets. Is designed like a garbage. Spot. Oh God, no! Laddie, don't you think you should rephrase that? You're right. Oh, he gave him a chance. I meant to say that it should be hauled away as garbage. Oh, that gets it. <laughs> no, Scotty, you were supposed to be the voice of reason. No! Oh no! No! Oh my god. Oh yeah, protect them. You don't want them to get hurt. They're gonna get into so much trouble. Oh, he's getting a free drink. Oh, check up. No! Oh my god. This guy is. What is he doing? He's getting free drinks, right? Yes, he is. And he doesn't spill a single drop. I love this! Ah, oh. <laughs> This is so much like a cartoon! <laughs> this guy is my hero! <laughs> Oh man, this is gonna be so bad. Small disturbance. Small the disturbance. Crew. I am forced to cancel shore leave for both ships. Of course. I'm waiting. Check up. Oh my I god. I know you. I don't know, sir. I don't know, sir. Dismissed. Not you, Scotty. Scotty, not you. Who threw the first punch, Scotty? Through the first punch. He's not even Jenny, mad. The Klingon said, Is this off the record? No, this is not off the record. <laughs> well, Klingons call you a. A dictator? Tin plated dictator with delusions of godhood. Is that all? And after they said all this, that's when you. No, that's there. when they insulted the ship, not you. But I didn't see that it was worth fighting about. I mean, I don't care if they insult you, but they don't insult my girl, though. They call the Enterprise a garbage skull. That's when you hit the Klingon. Yes, sir. You hit the Klingons because they insulted the Enterprise. Not me. Well, sir, this was a matter of pride. Yeah, and his pride is not getting that well out of this. But you have to be grounded. Restricted to quarters. Yeah. <laughs> That'll give me a chance to catch up on my technical journals. That's not even a punishment for him. Oh, man. Look at that. Don't tell me you've got a feeling. Don't be insulting, Doctor. Remind me of the 
It is a human characteristic to love little animals, especially if they're attractive in some way. Doctor, I am well aware of human characteristics. But this is a parasite. I like them. Everyone does. Better than I like you. Doctor. They do indeed have one redeeming characteristic. They're quiet. They do not talk too much. <laughs> oh man, they started to be everywhere. <laughs> That's the size of a small chihuahua. Oh my god, they move. This is the first time I see one moving. The nearest thing I can figure out is that they're born pregnant. Yeah. Which it seems they're bisexual, reproducing at will. Wow. Brother, they got a lot of will. <laughs> yeah, they do. Oh, but they do give us something, Mr. Spock. They give us love. But you can't live out of love, honey. Too much of anything, Lieutenant. Even love isn't necessarily a good thing. Yeah, good point. Clean up the entire ship. But no, where are you going to do with so many? Where are you going to leave them? Get these tribbles off the bridge. Breeding animals is not against regulations. Only breeding dangerous ones. They could be dangerous now that you mention it. In my opinion, you have taken this entire very important project far too lightly. I think of this project as very important. It is you I take lightly. You have given free and complete access to this station to a man who is quite probably a Klingon agent. Oh, that's very serious. Who? Sure, so who are you referring? To that man who just walked out of here. Cyrano Jones. A Klingon agent. No, wait, no. He cannot be a Klingon agent because the the Tribbles like him. And Tribbles apparently don't like Klingons, so. He was within the Klingon sphere of influence less than four months ago. The man is an independent oh. scout captain. Oh no! That looks like a kindergarten. Oh my no! 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 In my coffee! I want these things off the ship. I don't care if it takes everything. Yeah. I want them off the ship. Hi. They're into the machinery, all right. And they're probably in all the other food processors, too. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. And in the storage compartment. The grain. We're beaming down. Oh, Cyrano Jones is going to get into so much trouble after this. It's not working, sir. It seems to be stuck. Oh, no. The furball down. Look, the Battle of the Bastards. That's the cover of the book. That's the cover of the book. Yes, that's the cover. They seem to be gorged. Gorged? gorged. On my grain? Kirk, I am going to hold you responsible. Hundreds of thousands. Yeah. One million seven hundred seventy-one thousand five hundred sixty-one. At the rate. That's assuming and allowing for the amount of grain consumed and the volume of the storage compartment. They've been Kirk, feeding only from gone. there? Now you have insulted me. You have ignored me. You, you walked all over me. You have abused your authority, and you have rejected my requests. And Iris, I'll hold you in irons if you don't shut up. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but even though the guy is not precisely the best character in the series, he's got a lot of points, and he's right. Everything he's accused Kirk is absolutely right. He hasn't taken him seriously and all that. I, I mean, I'm, I'm going to hand it to, to Kirk that he was not supposed to use the emergency channel. But in the end, the Federation gave him a, a direct order, which probably, okay, if he hadn't done that, probably Kirk wouldn't have this attitude. But, you know, Kirk should have changed the attitude from the moment that the Federation told him that he should be backing him up, and that only made it worse. So this is on Kirk, too. Okay. 
So, yeah, he's behaving not the best, even though, I mean, Barris doesn't have any authority to be speaking to him like that, but okay. All we have to do is quit feeding them. We quit feeding them, they stop breeding. Too late. Oh, yeah. Triple is dead. Oh, oh. So are these. A lot of them are alive. They won't oh, that's be horrible. Out. The logical assumption is that there is something in the grain. Yeah, bones. I want the triples, the grain, everything analyzed. I want to know what killed these triples. I haven't figured out what keeps them alive yet. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I cannot take this seriously with Kirk having his hair undone and triples hitting him on the head every now and then. This is just hilarious. I can't. You know. <laughs> that isn't gonna do you any good, Kirk. Wait, 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 wait. But now I'm thinking, if this wheat is harmful for the not only the tribbles but for any living organism, then you know the tribbles ended up being the canary in the coal mine. So not a good thing. At this point you cannot hold that, you know, affectionate feelings for the tribbles considering they are a plague. We'll have a board of inquiry, and they will roast you alive. Yes, and I am going to to enjoy every minute of it. Yes, until that board of inquiry, I'm still a captain. And as captain, I want I two can't. things done. First, bite Cyrano Jones. And second... Stop throwing tribbles at my head. Close that door. I can't, I can't, I can't. That was really funny. Poor people. You don't want to hurt them? Few questions. <laughs> Finally, he's been off forever. Who put the tribbles in the quadro triticale? What was in the grain that killed them? Captain Kirk. The, before you go on, may I make a request? The Klingons? Oh, oh, oh. There's your Klingon agent. That's the Klingon agent. Okay, so. Got it. Was at the bar? What was in the bar? Klingons. Klingons. They don't like Klingons, no. okay. Mr. the bears, they like you. Well, there's no accounting for taste. <sighs> there's your Klingon like agent. You, yeah. Jim, this man is a Klingon. I wonder what Starfleet Command will say about that. Stop it! If he was a spy, it's not his responsibility. Although they could be working together. Okay. The green. Oh, yes. It was poison. Poison. Yes, oh, it's been impregnated with the virus. No. So, they were the canary in the coal mine. Poor Tribbles. I mean, yeah, they're a plague and everything, but they didn't deserve to die like that. They starved to death. Uh, storage compartment full of grain. They starve to death. So, th th this agent also poison it? And the Tribbles had nothing to do with it. I don't know, I never saw one before in my life, and I hope I never see one of those. Okay, okay, he's got a point. Like, how could he put a Tribble? He will be like... <laughs> yeah, and this guy is scared of, of Tribble, so he probably wouldn't be able to hold one. Okay, so somebody else did. But then who put the tribbles there? You have six hours to get your ship out of Federation territory. <laughs> they right, just ran away! Hey, you know, I think I can learn to like tribbles. No, you don't. Oh, oh poor Captain, man. I I'm free to go now. No, you have a so lot to clean. You know what the penalty is for transporting an a animal dangerous. from the human life. Twenty years in a rehabilitation colony. Okay. Friend, friend, Kirk. Friend, Kirk. Kirk. Put you wise to the poison grain, and they did help you to find the Klingon. Well, they did avoid the human casualties. Family. Pick up every trip on the space station. If you do that, I'll speak to Mr. Lurie about returning your station. Okay, it's a feasible work. <laughs> Take years. 17.9 to be exact. Feasible still. We're start working now, honey. Some of them actually move. I don't see any triples around here. 
and you won't find the trouble on this entire ship. Oh. How? Scotty did it. Scotty! Taking into account the possibilities of... I don't want to Can I just this. know what Here's happened? Well, it was Mr. Scott who performed the actual engineering. Mr. Scott, where are the triples? I use the transporter cap. To the Klingons? Scott, you didn't transport them into space, did you? Oh no, that would be horrible. Jack, that'd be inhuman. Yeah. I gave them a very good home, sir. Where? Oh no. I gave them to the Klingons, sir. They're gonna throw him to space! That is so horrible! They are terrified of, of... They are mutually terrified of each other. Okay, finally! I got to see this episode and actually understanding it. Like I said before, I was very young when I first saw those books. I remember it like I probably saw the episode. I now realize that I never did. I read the books and that was a long time ago. And when I found them again and that I showed them on camera to you, I didn't want to read them again because I didn't want to spoil the episode. So I just kind of like flipped them and put them back uh, to, you know, to the bouquet. So I really didn't see any of the episodes. And so now I see what it's all about. There's the Quadro Triticale and Klingons again. This My Authority Does It All kind of figure is not really there. Now, this time actually was uh, Kirk. I saw a lot of different characters that were new and that had a significant weight in the story. So in the first place, we got Mr. Lurie, who is the guy who's in charge of this station. Oh, let me take my, my glasses off, sorry. Uh, then we have Mr. Uh, Barris, who has the shipment of Quadro Triticale. Then we have Mr. Darwin that ended up being the Klingon spy. We have Cyrano Jones, who is this kind of a sneaky salesman. We have Colleth, and we have the other Klingon. I can't remember his name. And we also have this appearance of Admiral Fitzpatrick on the screen, probably the blondest man I've ever seen on television. And finally, in a much lower level, we have the bartender who has a few lines with Serrano Jones. And we also saw a lot of extras in the pub. Also, all of the uh, red shirts and green shirts that were sent down, the 12th man, and some Klingons as well. We also saw uh, people in the ship in this kind of a leisure area where they play chess and we see a lot of people there. So there was a lot of people involved in this episode. So that kind of makes it attractive. Even though we met a lot of people in this episode, they were not crewmen from the ship or did we know anyone from the ship? I think we didn't. It's just a guy from the Federation. But he's not part of the Enterprise, so we got our regulars. I really missed Sulu, but I suppose this was when he was still filming with uh, John Wayne, probably. I wish he was part of this episode as well, because I really like Sulu. I would consider this to be a comical episode. I love the comedy here. It's not so ha-ha kind of funny like the I Mud episode. Even the music was part of it. I kind of sensed every time that uh, they wanted to show that the Tribbles make everything like calm and relaxed. The music was also calm and relaxed. The lights were lower. What I would like to know is how much money they spent on fur to make this episode. I mean, you would reuse a lot of the tribbles and put them here and then take them all again and put them somewhere else. But that tribble shower that was uh, Kirk's <laughs> tomb for a moment, how many were there? Like, I would like to know exactly how many tribbles were made 
And what I would love to know also is what happened to them after this episode was made. Like, did any people got a triple? Is there a real triple up for sale on eBay that I might get? Because that's actually a, an amazing thing. I know that probably still sell them, but like, you know, originally from the show, it will be great to know where are they now. I feel that will be kind of a special historical prop um, because there are so many. I think the story is super well written considering that there's the space station that uh, there's still a competition and we've seen this before in Friday's Child that there's a competition between Klingons and the Federation in order to win you know, treaties with other planets, like it happened in Capella 4. Capella 4? Capella? Capella 4? I think it was Capella 4. So they were trying to get the deal with the Capellans in order to subtract this valuable mineral, right? And it was between these two. This is the exact same. So this is not a surprise, but it's not like, ah, oh, not again. It's different because it's something that we know it's happening between the Federation and the Klingons that they are trying to get their treaties and they have to find some sort of peace in between because, you know, they're not going to fight over another piece of land that doesn't belong to any of them. It's not like they're all humans, right? So since this is a small detail in the story, it's great that this is again repeated so that we feel this is what happens between these two factions. I love the fact that because you want resources in a planet, you need food, and food is precisely what makes the tribbles reproduce, okay? Now, I know this is exactly 20 years, well, not exactly, but somewhere around 20 years before the gremlins. So we know this, like, don't feed them, and then they are a lot of them. They're not as cute <laughs> as uh, the tribbles. It's pretty much the same ground, so I suppose probably the Gremlins was taken from this, or I don't know if the Gremlins was a novel or something. I'm pretty quite ignorant about this, because I've seen the Gremlins back in 1990. I haven't seen them again. The fact that the, it's also proven that this wheat was poisoned, that was horrible, but then in the end, who put the tribbles on in the wheat? Like, who put them in the deposits? Like, did they just find their way? Because I do remember somebody saying, who put them there? Okay. And then they asked Darbin if he had put them in the weed. And he said no. But then we didn't know who actually did that. Because that was the weak point on Darbin's plan. I thought about sending them to space, and I know that I mentioned it, but it's like, I don't want to do it, but at some point, you're going to have to do it. I mean, if they become a plague, you're going to have to do something to contain the plague, and that means sacrificing a lot of those animals. We've seen this happen historically. I imagine that maybe the Tribbles or this story was based on, you know, the stories that we've known so far about how bringing a foreign species into a new ecosystem that could be favorable for it could be a disaster. And we know this, like from Australia, that they had this problem with the rabbits. And um, I was remembering this specific case, and this is another reason why I had to pause, is to bring down the book from where I read it. And um just wanted to show you, I, I had to bring it, and it's, I don't want to show you the book because it's in terrible condition, but this is one of my favorite books ever since I was a child. This is um, Fun with Math and Physics by Jacob Perelman. This was written in 1913 and anyway it, it tells the story in uh, chapter 17 is numbers what stories about giant numbers the, the thing is that the book is in Spanish so I'm gonna have to translate as I read and so it says here that when the Europeans discovered Australia this country had no rabbits so rabbits was 
uh, introduced into Australia at the end of the 18th century, and since there were no carnivores that would feed off of them, the multiplication of these rodents acquired an extraordinarily rapid rhythm. Soon, a true plague of rabbits invaded all of Australia, causing horrible damages to agriculture and becoming a true disaster. There were many uh, attempts trying to get rid of this uh, disaster. There's an, there's a similar case about rabbits in California and then this is kind of an interesting case that happened in Jamaica and turns out that this island had a lot of uh, poisonous snakes and in order to finish or you know lowered their numbers, they brought in a bird called Secretary. I have no idea what the name of this bird is, but I have the book here. If you want to see this book, you want to check it out, you can find it on archive.org. I can put the link in the description box below. If you want to acquire this book, I will leave a link to their Amazon website. The Secretary Bird, yeah. So it was a furious destructor of these poisonous snakes and so the number of the snakes did reduce obviously but now the rats started to get everywhere because there were no snakes that would feed of these rats so in order to reduce the number of the rats they decided to bring in the mongoose okay so they brought four couples of mongooses and they just let them free in australia in, in jamaica and so in about 10 years they had practically exterminated the rats and the mongooses started to feed off of whatever they could because they couldn't be feeding out of rats anymore so they became omnivores okay so they started eating you know farm birds they started eating puppies lambs little pigs they started eating the eggs but they also started hitting on fruit trees and wheat fields and other types of plantations. So again, they had to start chasing the mongooses in order to keep everything balanced. So this is, these are uh, some of the stories about how dangerous it is to, you know, try to dictate over nature because, you know, this is something that we've heard before, you know, life finds its way and it can be catastrophic at times to bring uh foreign species uh, this is something that i really like to do i like to react to some of the trivia that i find on imdb so um i'm gonna start reading some of them the scene in which kirk is buried in, a, in an avalanche of tribbles like i said i would like to know how many um tribbles fall took eight takes to get right. The tribbles were thrown into the hatch by members of the production crew. The crew members were not sure when to stop because they were unable to see the scene. This is why additional tribbles keep falling on Kirk one by one. William Shatner can be seen looking perplexed as to why more tribbles keep falling on him. I... This was so funny and I understand it now. This is so natural. This is an organic reaction because not only does it fall on his head, but they also make this kind of a squeak sound, which makes it even funnier. But it's Kirk's reaction. Well, in this case, uh, Mr. Shatner's reaction that makes it so funny because he's like, are you kidding me? This was amazing. This was pure gold. To create the one triple moving on its own, the prop supervisor brought a battery-powered toy dog and stripped it down to the mechanical works. This is something that caught my attention, like, how did they do it? It was just moving on its own in the pub shot. Uh, once recovered with fur, uh, including the toy legs, the prop moved on camera along the railing on Enterprise Bridge without wires or external assistance okay the toy was so noisy all the dialogue in the scene had to be looped with adr <laughs> tribbles have made subsequent appearances in numerous different versions of star trek i don't want to know i don't want to spoil myself
During the famous bar fight, careful observers will note that while tables are broken, all the chairs remain intact. The tables were studio property. The chairs were rented, and if damaged, would have to be paid for. Okay. William Shatner recalled the great enjoyment all the cast had filming this episode. He noted, the trouble we had with trebles was to keep your straight face. It was just a lot of fun. And you can tell they were having fun. Writer David Gerrell tried to pitch a sequel to this episode during the 30s, and the producer Fred Freiberger rejected it because he did not like the comedic tone of the episode. I think it was a great comedic tone. In some scenes, and if you watch in high definition, a coffee stain is clearly visible on Spock's velour shirt. Leonard Nimoy spilled his cup of coffee during lunch and there were no other costumes available for him. Oh my goodness. The pile of tribbles near the end was actually created by gluing triple props around a large wire frame which William Shatner then stood in the middle of to give the illusion of mass numbers. Oh, clever. In reality, there were only 500 tribbles at least. I got that answered. They only made 500. George Takei does not appear in this episode. For much of the second season, he was filming uh, the Green Berets. Okay, so yeah, he was filming with... Uh, Mr. Wayne. William Campbell recalled that after this episode was aired, his neighbor's son consequently addressed his wife as Mrs. Klingen. <laughs> the episode was nominated for a Hugo Award for Best Dramatic Presentation at the 1968 Science Fiction Convention. Okay. The inspiration for the design of the Tribbles came from a fluffy keyring. You want to see something funny? I have a fluffy keyring too. In his first meeting with the Klingon commander, Collett cites authority to sure leave rights as authorized by the Organian Treaty. This occurred in Errand of Mercy when the Organians prevented a war between the Federation and the Klingon Empire. Uh, the Treaty of Organia dictates interactions between the two sides to prevent another chance of war. Oh my god! How come I missed this? I should have I should have picked on that one. But yeah, they were the Organians and they thought they were kind of primitive and they were like super advanced. Despite this episode's popularity, Robert H. Jessman wrote in his book Inside Star Trek The Real Story that he never liked this episode. Jessman felt that the humor was too over the top and the show became a parody of itself. I don't know, I think... I think I Mod went a lot higher in its comedic tone. Uh, Wolf in the Fold, I mean, that ending, like, everyone got high. Really? Okay. Spock's estimate of the triple population, 1,771,561, is mathematically accurate given the explanation. That's assuming one triple multiplying with an average litter of 10, producing a new generation every 12 hours over a period of three days. The population growth, counting by 12 hour intervals, would go from one triple. 2, 11, 121, 13, 31, 14,641, 161,051, 1, 771,561. Oh my god! It also assumes that tribbles have a life expectancy of at least three days, which is possible but not certain. A relatively short life expectancy would tally with their high metabolism, growth rate, and multiplicative proclivities. Okay. I can't believe I read this entire paragraph in one sitting. Oh, Stanley Adams, who played the role of Serrano Jones, was an accomplished television scriptwriter. He has 17 writing credits, which include next season's show, The Mark of Gideon, as co-writer. Wow. The consequences of Scotty transporting the Tribbles into the Klingon ship reach farther than Scotty probably could have foreseen. As the tale by Worf in Trials and Tribulations, I'm gonna have to take this one, the Klingons consider Tribbles to be an ecological menace and mortal enemies of the Klingon Empire. When an effort to breed a natural predator that could hunt them failed, the Empire made a concentrated effort to hunt the Tribble down to extinction, which finally culminated in the destruction of the Tribble 
little homeworld. At the end of the 23rd century, despite this many tribbles survived. They survived in other ships. Okay, yes, but this is even worse because what I thought was going to happen is that they were just going to throw them into space and get rid of it. But they exterminated their planet. This is a spoiler I should have never known. Well, at least I got some of my questions answered. Thank you, IMDb, for telling me that there were only 500 um, tribbles. But one of the things that I really want to know is what happened to the props. So if any of you guys know, please let me know in the comments. Like, what happened to the real props? Are they on sale? And where can I get a replica of those things? Because I would love to have a tribble. This is something that, that definitely has to be in my collection. Um, anyway, so... Thank you for joining me in this episode. I really had a great time watching it. Like I said, this was a very important day for me. I finally got to watch it. I understand why this is one of the very popular, kind of classic um, episodes of Star Trek. I have to agree that this is not entirely representative of Star Trek as what we know, because some of the episodes can be super serious. Like I said, this might be not precisely representative but it has a huge chunk of this show's heart, in my opinion. And that's okay. That's okay, because this is a very fun, enjoyable episode. As And, and even though I can see that a lot of people didn't like it, apparently the audience did. Okay, so I liked it. Uh, I enjoyed it. As you can see, I'm a big fan of furry things. That's not furry. Anyway, thank you for joining me in this very special episode. I'll see you in the next one. God bless and bye-bye.